All right, so to get started with SciFinder, we want to first register to use SciFinder, and you will find that using the LSSU library. So I've typed in the address there. And once you get to this, you want to scroll down and select Subject Research Guides. And then we want to look for the Chemistry Research Guide. And what you want to do then is scroll down slightly and you're going to see this first time user information for SciFinder and then you'll go through the registration process. If you are off campus, you will have to log into the campus network and you'll do that using your username and the password that you would use to log in into any campus computers. And this is not your email address. All right, so you would just go through to register as a new user and fill out these things here. I already have a username, but you would just go through these fields and enter in using your LSSU email address. And once you have that completed, go back to the LSSU library. And you would find it the same way. So subject research guides, chemistry research guides, and here is SciFinder Scholar Access. All right, so here's the sign in screen. So you can access your SciFinder from the library like we saw, or you can find it through the chemistry website. You'll go through the current students link because you are a current student. And if you scroll down, you'll see SciFinder here. This is the access if you've already registered. You can also find the SciFinder registration here. And if you're accessing SciFinder off campus, you want to use this link here. And this will go through the same thing where you have to log into the campus network. So each time you access SciFinder from off campus, you'll have to go through this portal. And then that will take you right to the SciFinder sign in. So just go ahead and sign in using the username and password you just created. For many of the labs, you'll need to find chemical properties for your starting materials and products. And you can use this if you have a CRC laying around, which I don't imagine most of you do. These are also found in Crawford, which at this time is probably not helpful to you. Or you can use SciFinder to find these properties. Okay, so what you'll notice are these three tabs. We have Explore, which contains references, substances, reactions, their save searches, and SciPlanner. For the most part, we'll be using Explore, and we want to use the Substance Identifier box. So we want to find different substances, which is the same thing as compounds. I can type in the name of a compound, so sucralose, and then click on the search button. And you can see the structure of sucralose there and the substance detail page. So there's key physical properties here, and you can click on the substance itself in the box to open up information about that. And what you'll see here is the molecular weight, which also you'll need for your chemical properties table for each of the labs where we're making new compounds. <clears throat> the melting point, which is a value that we'll use often as well. And then the value here of the boiling point that's predicted. Generally, you should indicate these values in degrees Celsius because this is an organic chemistry lab. So we don't want to see Fahrenheit temperatures. There's a density that's also predicted. But you can see these other properties down here. There's experimental properties. There's spectra here available as well. So if you want to get references about sucralose, you just click on this Get References icon. And then this box will pop up. If you don't choose any of the boxes, they'll just show all of the boxes. So we can go ahead and just do that and see how many references there are about sucralose. And you can see that there are 8,064 references having to do with sucralose. If you want to narrow this down, you click on the Refine tab over here. Then we can choose how to refine it. So I don't like to dig through all kinds of papers. I really am interested in journal articles. So I can narrow it down by document type. And I don't need biographies about these. I just want journal articles. Other things that you might want to avoid sometimes are patents. Those are very hard to dig through. So I have a whole bunch of articles here. I can narrow it down by author. You can do it by a cast registry number, document type. I'm going to go ahead and narrow it by journal name. And I will choose food and chemical toxicology. And whatever you want, you choose to 
narrow it down by whatever field you can do it that way. You can also cross-reference different subjects if that's what you want to do when you're looking for a compound. So here are the different articles having to do with that. So you can click on one of the articles. Every once in a while you'll get an article that has the full text available and you can just click on the full text. But most times you'll just see the abstract of an article and you can just read to see what that article is about. And it still contains that structure there. So I can just go back. So maybe I want to look for an article in a different journal. And I can do that as well. That will bring up different articles from different journals. All right, so if you wanted to start a new search, we can also search by research topic. Instead of using the substances as before, we type in sucralose here. And then we'll see other articles. And you can see different articles here. Another tool that is very handy, and you'll probably not use this a ton in this class, but it is useful, is to search a compound by its structure. So you can search a substance by chemical structure, and you can click on this and it will allow you to draw the structures. And right now you haven't drawn very many organic structures yet. So this is probably a foreign tool for you right now, but you have the option of drawing something like a six membered ring. You can click on the carbon and a single bond, and you can add things to that. And let's say I wanted a double bond, I can just click on that to an oxygen. And there's options of looking for the structure itself. If I wanted to look for this compound, if I wanted to look for a reaction where this is made, or if it is something that is used as starting material, I could look for that. So let's go for reaction. And here you can choose it as being the product, a reactant, a reagent, or any role. I'm just going to go for product here. And then this is the structure that's correct. And then you type search. And then you can see different ways of making that compound. There's different steps here. I can go from an NH2 to a carbonyl. So this is how you can use this in searching different structures. You can also search by author. So if you meet somebody at a conference or it's, you know, a graduate advisor that you're interested maybe in working with. So I might look for this person. This, so this is one of my previous bosses here. And you can look for alternate spellings of the last name, but I know that's how you spell her name. So I'm going to uncheck that box. And there's a couple of different references. So there's a Sterla. There's the Sterla SJ, which can be listed. And you can just check on all of these because some journals don't have first names. It's just initials. So I'm just going to check all of them to make sure that they're there. So you can see here all of the things that she has written and you can narrow these down. So one way to refine them, one of the tools that you can use is to remove duplicates. So anything that is doubled up in multiple categories will get removed. So there were 300 something references before and now we're down to 190. So 161 of those were removed. And if you wanted to search or narrow it down by author name, you could do that. So we can show more. So if you wanted to see how many papers that she wrote with me as an author, you can click on that and there is one. And this is the reference that would appear. And this was about DNA addicts. So you can find lots of different papers narrow them down by subject. With author, you can narrow it down by journal articles. So you can get related citations. So any papers that have referenced this, we can find links to other sources. So there might be a full text. If the journal article comes from the American Chemical Society, we do have access to those journals. So you should be able to read this full article and here's the full article here. So if you see this link to other sources, you may be able to find the full text of the journal. Below here is other papers that have referenced this one. And if you're not sure where the reference information is, you can see the source here. These are the things that you can plug into the reference generator in order to get the reference for your reference section on there. 
All right, so that's kind of the, the short and the long of using SciFinder.